So we're starting that right now. Okay, well, first and foremost, uh, uh, ahead of time, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, wanted to, uh, to wish you that. Uh, for those that'll be here Thursday, we look forward to serving you. And if you're uh, doing something with uh, your family or elsewhere, I hope you have a, a very uh, enjoyable Thanksgiving holiday. A couple of updates uh, around the club, no particular order. Um, our irrigation crews continue to work through the community, um, checking uh, all of the irrigation. They made really good progress this week. Um, working through estate and villa homes, they'll move back out into the associations after that. They're literally checking every single head. Um, to date, uh, actually minimal issues have been reported, which is a good sign. Um, but the sooner we can get the irrigation check, the, the more regular uh, maintenance we can do in terms of uh, mowing, chemical applications, fertilizers, pest control, that sort of thing. So hopefully they wrap that up here in the next week or so. Um, also, uh, I know as of today, uh, there's another FEMA truck that's back out in Somerset. Uh, we were able to, to pull a contact and ask them to make a, a, an extra loop because a lot of you all in Somerset have just recently uh, gone through the, uh, the, the cabinet uh, pulling phase and the drywall removal phase. So they're back there today. Hopefully they spend a day and tomorrow back there trying to clean that area back up for you. Um, also, um, for those of you on the call, probably more in particular um, in, in upper level units, um, or maybe even those that are in estate villa homes, if you've got contractors on site, um, please uh, advise them on, on where to park, make sure they're not parking uh, in, in other owners' parking spaces or, or uh, on both sides of the road. Just be cognizant of that. I'm sure that issue will uh, become even larger as we get into restoration for the associations. Um, but just as a reminder, um, just please be conscious of anybody that's coming to your unit, whether they're coming to measure, whether they're coming to actually do work uh, or anywhere on your property, make sure they're abiding by the parking rules and being considerate. The other thing is if you've got your own contractor here, remember you, you should make arrangements for them to dispose of any any remnant from your unit or your property. Th those things should not go into association dumpsters. Um, you should make arrangements when you contract with them um, that they take that with them. So just, just a reminder. Also had a couple of uh, questions regarding um, association grills and propane. So we, we are in the process. We've got five association um, barbecue grills to replace that we lost in the storm. Uh, Tyler's promised me he's going to up the priority on that and should ha have those back soon. Also, um, we're back to getting regular propane. So he's going to make sure that there's propane out there on the grills that we do have um, for you to use those if you want to use those grills at the pools. And then speaking of pools, we are still waiting for parts for both Wedgwood pools. Um, what we're seeing, as you can imagine, is most of the pool issues around town are having the same problems with pumps and replacement parts and, and things are just on back order. Um, but we hope to have that those two pools up and running at Wedgwood soon. Um, we, uh, we, we did clean up the Sutton Walk pool. Um, it really cleaned up really nice. Um, we are waiting on a vacuum pump for that. Um, as soon as that vacuum pump comes in, um, we can open that pool up. Um, but, th but that pool actually uh, made it uh, very well from the storm. That was the one that was the most impacted, but uh, re really bounced back nicely. So hopefully we'll have that up and running for you for you soon as well. Um, and then uh, an update, because I'm sure uh, hopefully we'll, we'll limit the questions on this, an update on um, how we're doing in the process of getting uh, vendors to, to offer a package option for those of you in the associations. Uh, we are now, we've identified and selected um, five different uh, contractors, one for each association. They are working on putting together their first draft of these packages. And um, hopefully in the next week or so, um, we'll be able to send something out so you all can have that first look at what's included in those packages and what the pricing is. So um, nothing more to report on that other than that process is working its way out, and I think it's moving very well uh, in that we've gotten five vendors confirmed, 
and they all have your floor plans. They're working up your, your details of your packages and hopefully be able to put that out to you in the next week or so. So, all right, I think that's everything on my list. I'll jump into some questions here. Uh, update someone sharing that FEMA will be at the Bass Road Library until after January 1st. So thank you for reporting on that. I think it was a Zoom or two ago where, where I had said I wasn't sure uh, what was still going on at the Bass Road Library, but it sounds like FEMA is still there. Um, so if you need to get in touch with FEMA or if you've got an application outstanding and you're having a tough time on the website getting a reply, I do suggest you head there and speak with them. We spoke last week about the three feet of sheetrock left in showers with tile. You mentioned insurance only covers four feet cut. Gene Jick said no. CJC was doing the removal of the tile in the shower and tubs. The manager of CJC in my unit said they were going to do that, but were told last week not to. Who is responsible for removing the sheetrock, the tub, and the shower area? And if it is us, is a permit required due to it being sheetrock? So, Nothing has changed on that. Um, the, the, the remediation efforts from CJC are really being dictated by what the standard with the insurance policy is, and that is to remove four feet, irregardless of whether it's in a tiled area or whether it's in a living room that, that isn't tiled. Um, it's, it's the same thing why they're not removing your upper cabinets, um, but are removing your lower cabinets because they're only removing what has been impacted by the storm surge. So um, sorry if the people you're talking to is giving you different information. I'm letting you know uh, what I know in terms of the associations and what they're doing um, to remove um, the rest of that tile. And, and, and I would think most of you guys would wanna do that because you may not be able to match that tile. That would be something you would take under in restoration. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, and also when it comes to pulling out tile, there is no permit we required for that. If you remember, um, the only thing up until this point that is needed a permit is for drywalling when it's over 100 square feet of drywall in a particular unit or dwelling. So um, you would not need a permit to take the rest of that tile out in the restoration phase. When will CJC repair damages directly caused by their personnel? Um, as we've reported many times, anything that's damaged, whether it's a metal stud, whether it's a pipe, electrical lines, all of that will be completed prior to drywall being hung. So anything that was damaged in the unit uh, during demolition um, will, will be fixed. What will be done about the garage door outdoor lights in Somerset Villas that have been damaged or broken? Um, I, I don't have an answer on that one quite yet. Um, I, I do know um, um, we're working with some electricians, and I can tell you electricians are significantly backed up right now trying to, uh, to provide us quotes on certain things, but I don't have anything specific on uh, Somerset Villas and the damaged and broken outdoor lights there. Will stud guards be placed on pipes prior to drywall as current codes require? Um, first, I've heard of that. I'm not. I'm really not in tune with um, what what current codes are, whether that is part of the current code or not. But I mean, anything that's being done is going to follow uh, code. So um, I don't have anything else. I, I haven't um, been asked about stud guards before. Um, so. And tell CJC guys not to remove our water heaters. I have a new one and they were trying to take it out yesterday and I told them to leave it. Um, came by and told them to stop as well. Will do. So, I mean, if you've got a new water heater, I know they're taking some water heaters out um, for a couple of reasons. One is sometimes they need to, need to get to that drywall behind it. And other times um, it, it's because it was impacted from the storm. Um, but I think uh, glad, glad you got to them.
My unit at Somerset has been remediated. The remediation looks fine, but I have two possible issues. The wood floor in the master bedroom has not been removed, and there is a wood underlayment under the floor tile in the master bath that has likely been compromised. No one would otherwise know it's there. How, are, how do I bring this to your attention? Um, the wood flooring, I think we've mentioned this before. There's some glued down wood floors that need a piece of equipment to remove those, and they've got four of those on site. And those, those guys are kind of traveling um, at, at a different schedule sometimes than what you're seeing the hand removal floor crew. So the wood floors will be taken out uh, as part of the process. Um, I would say if you know for sure that you've got an underlayment, they've laid that tile on top of something, um, you can send us an email and we'll make sure to get it uh, on, the, on the CJC list so they're aware of that. Because you're right. And unless they're made aware of it, if they can't visibly see that, uh, there's no way them that they would know that there's an underlayment. But we have seen that come up before. Is there anything we can do as owners to help with the cleanup? Um, I, I, I'm not sure if you're referencing cleanup around the property or in your property. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll reference Waterford that I think did a great job. They had a group of volunteers. Uh, that have gotten together a couple of Saturdays in a row to kind of help just some various cleanup things. So, I mean, that that's certainly encouraged. It certainly helps everybody out. Uh, in terms of the unit, there's nothing that you would need to do inside your unit right now. Will CJC put the water heaters back in place? No, those will not be put back into place um, in remediation. That'll be restoration. Sorry for the delay on this. Maybe it's been answered. Went in unit for first time after cuts. Behind the drywall is poor center block with lots of holes in them. If water got in there in the blocks, how is that being remediated? Um, will the replaced drywall protect from that? Yeah, and we have talked about this. I mean, um, concrete and even the wood studs and the metal studs, they, they, there's a different, there's a standard, a different standard um, that's recommended um, through, through both the professionals and the insurance in terms of disinfecting these and cleaning these as opposed to the standard for the drywall is removal of the drywall. So um, there's a disinfectant phase that will happen um, um, prior to um, them coming back in and prepping for drywall. Is CJC replacing Durarock in the shower area? They are not replacing the Durarock in the shower area. That would be part of the restoration process. Can I confirm that Waterford has received the elusive drywall installation permit and that work is underway? I, I don't believe they're hanging drywall in Waterford, but I can tell you um, about 140 permits um, were, were finally submitted uh, the right way according to Lee County as of late last week. And we have now started to see each of those permits and they come in individually uh, showing up, uh, and we need the hard copy of the permit. So, you know, the, the permit is essentially approved, but work can't start until that permit is processed, and we actually have a, 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 a written permit in our hand. Um, but those started coming through as early as last Friday, um, and they're going to come through in batches, but I don't know of any, anybody yet that's actually physically hanging drywall. Any update on when the gym will reopen? Yeah, we're still back ordered. Um, there, there's there's twelve electrical outlets that that power the equipment in that um, workout room, and and they're very special. They're about eight hundred dollars a piece. Um, we we were only able to get nine. Um, the other three are on back order till later in December, but we're trying to see if there's a workaround to where we could just hook up those nine and at least get part of that workout facility up and running. So that's been a delay with the workout facility. Uh, it's, it's obtaining these, um, these high-end uh, electrical outlets that, that help with surge and protect the equipment. Um, they've been hard to track down, so. Can the package vendors commit to a time frame for the restoration? Example, weeks from the start date. Yes, that I've talked with them about that in terms of um, supplying uh, with their packages um, a realistic time frame, um, and they've all been agreeable to that. 
Um, so I expect to have that information as well when they when they present their packages. Can our chosen remediation contractor use the vendor packages for cabinets and bathrooms? N no, they can't. The, the, the packages will be complete packages, turnkey, everything. Um, however, um, in, in my discussions with various contractors in this process, uh, I'm also collecting a list of some individual contractors that you may be able to work with to do part of, of what you're looking to do. It's more of a, a, a referral or a resource of, of contractors that, that I discussed this package idea with, but, but I didn't feel like they had the wherewithal to do 40 or 50 or 60 units. They were only gonna maybe do 10 or 15 units, but uh, they may be a resource. So we plan on putting that out as well um, once we release these packages. Please tell us again, what is equipped for a home to be considered habitable? How can we get a certificate of occupancy or whatever it's called? Um, I, yeah, I don't think you need necessarily a certificate certificate of occupancy. Um, my understanding um, was this was back uh, before the vacate order was that um, you know a home needed a, 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 a place to go to the ba bathroom, a place to wash your hands, place to take a shower. And then I had heard from somebody that said it needed a particular interior door or something like that. But um, I, again, I haven't confirmed any of that. That that was what I was being told. Um, we did put out some resources on Lee County, um, the Lee County resource sheet we did a few weeks ago that I think has some information there. Um, but, you know, once the vacate order is lifted by the association, um, it's really the homeowner's discretion on occupying that or not. And we just you know, make sure that you do understand uh, what limitations they have in terms of occupying. If damaged items were left in units such as granite or toilets, how can we have them removed? Um, you can um, you can start another debris pile um, for 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 remnants. Um, we are going to see FEMA here on a second loop, if you will. It may be three four weeks from now, um, but you can start another pile if you'd like. Um, just make sure if you start that pile, you start it somewhere where that claw can can reach it. Don't put it under a tree. Don't put it underneath a carport. Um, and also be conscious that you're not putting that on top of an irrigation head as well. There was a comment on Facebook that Waterford remodeling cannot begin until December 1st. Is that accurate? Um, I don't know if that's accurate, if that was a comment on Facebook or not. I, I didn't see that. Um, but it's probably alluding to the fact that Waterford put out an email um, that, that had a uh, potential timeline of having all the drywall completed by the end of December. So uh, again, it's my understanding, and nothing's been confirmed here because it's an association decision, that, that, that as buildings, I would think this would be on a building by building basis, as buildings complete the drywall phase and conclude remediation, associations will, will lift vacate orders on a building by building basis. So they're not going to wait for everything to be done and then say, okay, the entire community is open. They're gonna do it building by building. So if that's the case, and if the timeline is accurate that everything would be done by the end of December, I would suspect that there will be buildings that um, come off of vacate prior to December 31st. We go with the contractor that Lexington, Lexington provided for for us to rebuild, do we pay them for the rebuild directly or is Lexing paying them directly through insurance? So, so on the association packages, those vendors, owners are going to contract with them personally, individually. Lexington nor your association will be involved with that. Really, Lexington is, again, Lexington is doing this really as a service and as a resource to provide you at least with an option for what we hope is a turnkey solution to restore your property. You're not required to go with these vendors. Um, and, and if you do go with these vendors, it would be something you're contracting out um, to do. Initially, the notice to vacate had stated council had been involved in the decision of the five HOAs 
I would think since they were involved, this would have been a fairly easy ask for them to put together for us. Please update what the status on a letter might be. I, I'm not quite sure what letter. Um, council was involved with the notice to vacate because the associations wanted to confirm that they had the right to do that. So that's why council was involved in that. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I just, I'm not clear on what your question is. Will CJC repairs for plumbing, et cetera, that was damaged by them be deducted from our insurance settlement on the first floor of Bridgestone? Um, I mean, any of the remediation work is 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 going to is going to be billed. Um, so I would assume so. I mean, if if there was plumbing issues um, and that was repaired, then those expenses would um, would be paid out of the insurance proceeds. Again, I I don't know. I haven't seen enough insurance reports to know if there's even allotments for this. I mean, but the reality is when you're taking drywall out and you've got piping that's 26 years old, you're going to experience some issues um, from, um, from pipe breaks. And I know there's a lot of you all that like to jump to the conclusion that it's all negligence. Um, but, but the reality is, is um, there are some things that have been damaged because it's the normal course of demo. Um, so, I mean, some things certainly somebody may have been careless on, and if they would have gone a little slower, maybe they wouldn't have broke something. But there's also quite a few things that we're dealing with that is just part of the process uh, when you go through cutting out drywall and that sort of thing. So I'm now handling this for my mother. How can I get on your email list? Um, I mean, you can send the front desk at Lexington or call the front desk uh, and talk with them, um, but they can update uh, your mother's account. Um, also, you can join the, the Lexington uh, Country Club members of Lexington Facebook page. Um, we're letting uh, relatives in on that. One of one of my toilets in my unit was damaged. Will CJC remove the damaged toilet from my lanai? That they, they they probably won't. I mean, if they left a toilet, then at least they probably felt like it, maybe it was damaged. Maybe they didn't see it was damaged, but they probably felt like it could potentially still be usable. Sutton Walk has cabinets and other debris that need picked up. We're aware of that. Absolutely. We told them Sutton Walk and uh, back at Somerset. So we're hoping they get both of those areas, um, but time will tell. At the start of remediation, we understood that the tub and toilet would be reinstalled in order to get a certificate of occupancy. Now we're told that this will be our responsibility. Does that mean that owners won't get a certificate until they have a contractor install tubs and showers? which would be very difficult for owners who are not on site. Um, yeah, I, I think I just answered this, but um, it, you don't need a certificate of occupancy. This isn't like it's a, it's a new build. Um, um, I think what we were trying to provide guidance on, at least at the time, was what we understood um, needed to be there for a unit to be occupied. Um, the only thing that's changed since then is the fact that the associations have said they're not really going to be the occupancy police. The association doesn't have the authority nor the responsibility to make sure that you're living in a unit that has the things that you potentially would need to live there, maybe a toilet, running water, et cetera. So uh, what the associations have said is that would be an owner responsibility to understand what is needed to legally inhabit and it would be an issue between the owner and Lee County if an issue did come up. Um, so that was the only real change in terms of um, what was discussed at one point in time and then what was clarified later on. Update on drywall permits, please. I think I've updated that um, according to email from Somerset. Some units are now ready for install. And that could be, I know they're 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 finishing up the all the drywall prep prep in South Mont Cove. As of yesterday, the permits that we actually physically had given to us, I don't believe any of those were with South Mont Cove. Um, but I can tell you, I mean, as soon as they physically have the permit in their hand, I, I do think they're ready to hang drywall. And I do think South Mont Cove probably has the most units prepped at this point in time. Please verify that contractor hired by unit owner will be removing all remaining sheetrock and tile and showers as part of reconstruction. Again, I think that that is confirmed. Um, 
Clyde Johnson is not removing um, any more than, than the four foot max um, cut uh, for the drywall or for the tile. So if you're going to have to replace all of your tile in your shower area, then part of reconstruction or restoration would be removing the rest of that tile. Uh, would it be possible to get an estimated schedule for remediation of Wedgwood garages and removal of moldy drywall? The the recent communication didn't mention garages, only first floor units. Yeah, I don't I don't think Wedgwood has that yet, uh, but I would think that would be the next step now that they're um, that they're providing you know more of a of a timeline to complete um, the uh, the restoration or the remediation of the ground floor units. They could start possibly letting us know when they're going to get into those garages. So, any update on the insurance coverages? I don't have any updates at all. Um, I mean, we're still waiting for um, those reports to come in in mass. I mean, we know we're going to get these reports in on a building by building basis. Um, so, we're probably looking at uh, five communities. We're going to have about 130 or 140 different reports that come in. Um, but we're still we're still waiting on that. We do not have that. Did I understand only 140 permits were sent in correctly according to Lee County rules? And now, no, you didn't understand that correctly. We, we have 140 um, or so total permits because permits are based on buildings. Um, so each permit needed to be pulled for each building. Um, and they're all submitted correctly now, but the process we were going through three different resubmittals, because each time we submitted, um, Lee County told us there was something else or something different they wanted on that permit. So we finally, um, hopefully satisfied whatever requests they have. Um, and we're given confirmation late last week that <clears throat> the permits that were submitted, which is a permit for every building and every association, as well as all the LCA um, addresses that we're doing amenity um, uh, remediation on um, were submitted correctly, uh, essentially approved. And the process then is that the permit is, is actually issued. And that is a different part of the process. And that comes via email. And we started getting some of those physical permits issued via email uh, Friday afternoon. And some more came in yesterday. And I would expect them to continue to ramp up the next two days at least until the holiday weekend. So um, the, the, they've all been submitted. Um, any update on Sutton Walk roofs? Um, as far as an inspection, they, they had an engineer uh, look at the roofs. So that has been completed. Um, I don't have any other update other than that, but I think the reviews of the roofs have all been done. And I know that your uh, association has signed a contract to replace the roof. No, the, <laughs> did I understand you to say the permits were delayed because they were improperly filed by Clyde Johnson? No, that's not what I said. They were not improperly filed. What I've said, and I've said it so many times, guys, is we submitted the permit. Lee County asked us for more information. We provided them that information. They then said they wanted more information. We provided them with that information. And then we provided them with additional information. And they said, oh, you didn't need to do that. You were fine the time before. And so they finally said, we accept these permits now. So it was nothing that Clyde Johnson did. Clyde Johnson has filed thousands of permits with Lee County. They know how to file permits, folks, okay? It has nothing to do with Clyde Johnson. It's Lee County. And as anybody knows that's worked with Lee County, it is crazy down there in normal times, let alone the thousands of permits that are being filed there because of what we're dealing with. So I would just get off the Clyde Johnson is not a fire permit thing. It's just, it's really... We're past that stage, I think. We're full-time Somerset residents and are renting off-site until the end of the year. Should we expect to be able to move into our unit by January 1, or do we need to find another place to rent in January? I can't answer that question. Um, I, I do think uh, over the last week, uh, many of the associations have been working closely with Clyde Johnson and their supervisors to try to pinpoint a realistic time to complete drywall. And do I think by the end of December, we're going to be um, 
well underway and, and even very close to done with all drywall, I think that's possible. But but to pinpoint a particular unit and a point in time of when you can get back in or when your vacate order is lifted, I, I, I can't give you that information for certain. Good. I won't even answer that one. What is scheduled for removing raking remaining debris in back of between buildings at Bridgestone? Yeah, so um, landscape crews finished up a summer set. Um, and if you follow Facebook, Pete posted yesterday, they were in South Mont Cove. Um, and then they'll be moving over to Bridgestone and Sutton Walk. So you'll see, uh, hopefully by next week, you'll see that residential landscape crew doing their, their first pass uh, all around Bridgestone and Sutton Walk. Where do we send pictures and info to our property that has been damaged in remediation by CJC? I mean, if, if you've got damage to your infrastructure, pipes, electrical, whatever, you don't need to send us pictures. All that will be corrected um, before any of the drywall is put up. Assume the cost for the contractor packages are covered by the master plan. I'm assuming you mean uh, master insurance, uh, master flood policy. Um, I wouldn't make that assumption. I think I've mentioned before, anybody that's been through an insurance claim, uh, any type of insurance claim, uh, even though you have coverage there, you know, you never really are made 100% whole uh, with insurance coverage. So we, we are asking um, these contractors to use the same software program that insurance adjusters use. It's a program called Accumate, where, where they estimate based on square footage um, costs. And all of these contractors have worked with insurance claims before. So we're definitely cognizant of trying to do our best to make these packages um, fit into that insurance settlement box. But I think realistically, um, I, I don't think anybody should expect everything to be paid 100%. I don't think that's realistic and that's not usually how insurance works. So inspection, who does, how do we request an inspection? The, the only inspection you would request is if you uh, met the deadline to hire your own remediation contractor, then associations are um, providing those inspections through Clyde Johnson to see where you're at in the process. Uh, but other than that, everybody else will be inspected um, as the process moves on. My Somerset Villa has interior cracks in garage walls that water did cover. Are there wood studs in these walls that needs to be cleaned, remediated? I mean, if there's any wood um, studs that are part of remediation, then, then those are, are, are being disinfected with a particular cleaner. Again, that, that's the standard for stud um, remediation when it comes to Cat 3 water, uh, just like with concrete. concrete. Any update from the property insurance adjuster reports for Sutton Walk? Um, no, nothing. I mean, when, when we have some insurance information, we're, we're going to absolutely pass it along. Um, so I, I would assume, you should just assume if, if we're not passing information, we haven't gotten it. But uh, I am not even sure that all of Sutton Walk has been fully adjusted from the property adjuster side yet. Um, I could be wrong, but um, that may not even been completed. I don't quite understand. Do we have to pay the contractor of a standard package up front or can he wait for the insurance payment? Um, I've talked with these contractors about this. This is the, the packages. I mean, they're definitely going to want something up front. They're not going to want the entire payment. Uh, but I think it's fair, especially in these times, to understand that a contractor is going to go out and start ordering things for your unit. They're going to need some front money. Uh, that's why we have suggested to you all investigate the SBA loan option, especially if you're a full-time Florida resident. Um, but but I, I would I would think that that will be part of all these contracts. Um, but we'll know more when those details are provided. Do I have names of any members who would rent their condos for January? Since many of us only have Lexington as our home for January, it could be necessary. Yeah, I, we didn't we didn't ask for that. Um, but what we're telling folks is we, we're referring you to Worthington uh, Realty um, in, in terms of you're looking for a rental. Um, it's obviously the season, so so it's much more difficult um, to, to for owners to give up their unit. 
if there is an owner out there listening that wants to give up their unit, um, they certainly can let us know and, and, and we'll let you know we have something, but, but I don't think that's as likely as it was a few months ago when we were asking for this. When CJC cleans the floors, are they moving <clears throat> the furniture to clean under there? Um, they're spraying right now. And, and there's some confusion there, I think, because right now most of you are going through or just went through <clears throat> the cleaning and disinfectant phase. This is not a construction deep clean. That happens at the end of the project. The cleaning and disinfectant is really a preliminary clean in order to get clean the areas that are being disinfected, uh, the, the studs, the walls. This is the part of the process where they're opening up uh, the plastic on your personal property and letting that disinfectant spray uh, settle in on that. They're spraying underneath those items. Um, so uh, th they'll be more of a deep clean where they handle the floors. Um, the floors are being disinfected, but I, I wouldn't consider them to be clean. So if you still see some dust or something on your floor, it doesn't mean that they didn't clean your unit. Um, this level of clean is a little different than the final construction clean. Is all the necessary drywall for remediation on site? Uh, not on site, but 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 it is in the possession of Clyde Johnson. Yes, um, but we, we're not. We don't have a place to store twelve thousand sheets of drywall. Um, but but we have a lot of it here, but not all twelve thousand sheets. Do you know Somerset Villas is done with the tear out, so we know if what is left in our unit is what we need to replace? I know each unit is different. Um, no, I, and I and again, I wouldn't, especially with Somerset. Um, even though they're moving along quicker and quicker there every day, I, I wouldn't assume yet that if something's left in there, it's going to be left in there because those crews are working at different areas at different times. So I don't think we're quite at that point yet um, to say if you've got a tub and tile that hasn't been removed, it's going to stay there. How long do we have to wait for the outside railings blown out on the fourth floor and eyes and Sutton Walk, it's dangerous. We cannot use that area until secured. And who repairs this? We we believe the railings are going to be under the the association's insurance. But again, that that's that's why uh, the associations are waiting for that process to play out uh, in order to make sure that they know um, they have to cover it and what the coverages are, and then they can they can get a contractor to do that. Which or whose insurance policies will cover the contractor package? Um, we're working with the contractors based on the master flood policy, but some of you that have personal flood, uh, you you may be able to also um, have insurance claim money from that too. But we're we're working off of um, what's covered in remediation, which is what we're putting together in these packages to restore. So cabinets, flooring, um, paint trim, interior doors, all that. Can we install new floors and bathroom fixtures before the drywalls and store installed by Clyde Johnson? M um, my understanding and what I've seen every association respond to with this is that you're currently under a vacate order. So there should not be any contractor work being done in your unit outside of what Clyde Johnson is doing for remediation. So I have not had an association tell me they're handling that any different. Um, so I'm not sure what your association is on your question, but I think all five associations have been consistent with that. How do I find out who my supervisors is? Um, so if you're in Somerset Villas, if you've got a question, you can always send us an email and we'll be happy to answer that for you. So. How do we get to see the standard package offerings for South Montco? My understanding is when we get this information, it will be able to be delivered electronically. Um, so um, th that, that's what we plan on doing. So those of you that aren't physically here, you'll get that information electronically. When are the lanai's being cleaned? Lanai's and garages will be more of a focus once they get through uh, these uh, ground floor residential units. There's a large hole in the concrete wall separating my unit from the next door unit. Um, again, that would be something that, I mean, I'm not gonna answer that on Zoom. If you wanna send me an email, I'll be happy to 
uh, put that on a Clyde Johnson list, take a look at it. Is the water safe for drinking? Has it been tested? If so, how frequently are the tests? Um, the boil order with water was lifted a, a month ago, at least, if not more. So, I mean, we don't test for water um, here at, at the club. Should we consider hiring a project manager to help close the communication gap between Clyde Johnson and the owner? This will alleviate the pressure on the management team and staff. And we've, we've, we've talked about that. You know, I think the one of the issues is uh, the employment market, but, but I do think that we've gotten a lot better the last couple of weeks with more frequent uh, association meetings with Clyde Johnson and their supervisors. And I, I would like to think some of you all have seen um, additional information being provided by your association, more details. I know some have uh, just recently done emails that have alluded to potential timelines and things like that. So I, I do think that they're getting much better um, coordinating uh, and putting information out. I've never had an insurance claim where I was not made whole on a like and type quality policy because of the fact I'm hopeful that at the end will be properly compensated. Um, I guess you've been lucky because um, I've, I've had quite a few insurance policies, uh, two, two flood instances, and <clears throat> it seemed like always um, there, there was a fight um, in terms of what the coverage uh, gave me as far as value based on what it cost me to put that back. But maybe that's not the case in Florida. Flood people tell me that the master plan covers from pain inside and the personal flood. The personal flood policies are for anything missed in the master. That's my understanding too, is, is typically if you have a personal flood policy, <clears throat> it picks up anything that's not covered under the master policy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And usually that means mostly personal property, so. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions here? I'll give you a minute. <clears throat> All right. We probably won't, uh, we won't do one on Friday, uh, zoom, but we'll probably pick one up next Monday or Tuesday. We'll send a link out to you guys, uh, notifying that. And then we'll have this up on the website. Uh, or up through the email uh, on the YouTube website, uh, hopefully in the next day or so. So everybody have a good uh, Thanksgiving and, and thanks for coming out.